Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Tuesday and Sarah Foley, Vertical Blondes Day. You guys, I'm always stoked for her courses because every single time we cry, <laughs> we let out all the things, we take off that code of judgment, we own who the hell it is we are meant to be. And that is what I love most about this course. It's going to be a very, very good time. Super stoked on it. Remember, if you're a manual wheelchair user, go ahead and drop your name in the chat to be entered in the Kenda Tire giveaway. Giving away a set of tires every day. So excited. That's my stoked face. So without further ado, Sarah, take it over. What is going on? Can you guys hear me okay? We can. Okay, cool. Yeah. And I, I feel like I'm having a hard time connecting my music, so hopefully we'll be able to hear that as well. Can you hear the music? Yes. A little bit? Okay. Who remembers what we do with this song? Anyone? Anyone? I'm going to get that off because I don't think it's working. We take off our code of judgment. We start it by letting off that bad guy, that bad guy is our judgment of ourselves, of each other, of what's going on, everything. Because our judgment gives us tunnel vision. We can't see anything if we're judging it, right? We want to open up our judgment, open up our mind, let it off. So I just want to kind of move in your seat a little bit and just shake it off. So you're a tough guy, like you're really rough guy, you just can't get enough. The guy. quickest way for you to ever change your ability to see things differently is to move your body. Change your physical state, get it moving. Woo! Just gonna dance around for a little bit. Let that judgment go. I see a few more people getting logged on. Shake it off. It's been on there for a while, so like peel it off your skin, let it go, trip it off, and then just drop it to the floor. Good! Oh my god, I love it. It's gonna be a good time by, I can always tell the vibe we're gonna have by how into it people get with this point. So, all right, we'll go and turn that down for sake of time. Thank you guys for joining me for a vertical view. Um, there was once a very wise, wise woman in my life. She's still in my life. She's, um, uh, she was my therapist and now I've officially fired her because I have to go a certain amount of years before I can actually start working with her. And I finally said, like, you've done what you can. I eventually want to start working with you and bringing your genius to the world. And so I had to fire her so we can get in on with our timing. And she once told me, she said, if we back up enough, not so much in time, but like in space, and we get this bird's eye view of our life, we actually see that it is this perfectly choreographed dance. And I love that. And that's what this whole thing is about today, is about giving you that vertical view, that bird's eye view of your life and sometimes we can get really, really stuck in victim mode. We can get stuck in why me? We can get stuck in all the things. And do not get me wrong for a split second. This still happens to me on the daily, okay? On the daily. So there is not a point where you will ever like completely get over this. It's just that you get to a point where you become aware of it. You see it when it's happening and you can actually redirect your focus. So getting that bird's eye view is gonna be our focus today. And I really want you to just take another moment going back to that whole judgment and say, what do I need to shift in my focus right now to let me and allow me to see my life as this perfectly choreographed dance? Like where in your life are you feeling like a victim? Where in your life are you saying, why me? Where in your life are you kicking and screaming that you wish it was some other way, right? So like kind of get a good perspective on that. I hope everyone brought something to write with, a piece of paper and a pen, because I really want you to like do this, okay? It's one thing for me to like give you homework and say, okay, now go do it tonight. And all of you tonight are gonna be like, 
Are you kidding me? We're not going to do it later. We got things to do after this call. So I want you to do it right now. I want you to see this as a very active call today. So when I say write something down, write it down. And don't do it for me. I, I, I could care less if you do it or not, even though I want you to. But do it for yourself. Okay, make the commitment right now. I'm going to go all in for myself today. Another wise woman um, in my life, her name is Nyla Medlock, and she's actually since passed away. And I feel like her words are ringing true even more today than they were when she was alive. And I met her at a specific an event, event and she came up to me and she came and she, she poked me on the head. And she says, this event, this entire weekend, I want you to stay out of here, like out of your head, okay? And I want you to play it full out from your heart. And then whenever you need it, it's already inside of you. So I don't want you to overthink anything. I don't want you to think anything's good, bad, right, wrong. Get out of that judgment and just play from your heart. And so I'm gonna do this hour for me. I'm gonna play full out for me because I wanna learn something about me. I wanna shift something in my life. I do wanna get out of that victim and I wanna to get to a place where I can say, this perfectly choreographed dance is my life and I love it all. I don't think there is a specific, there is an actual thing of finding true happiness, being happy all the time, right? It's a hoax, this toxic positivity, right? Being happy all the time, no, that is not the goal. It is finding joy in every single thing that happens to us, finding a, a purpose in things. It's not about being happy through it all. There are there are a multitude of emotions, right? And if we think of emotions and feelings as this like piano, there's some really high and happy ones and there's some really dark, solemn, like dun, dun, right when you play on the piano. And if we can get to this place where we play it like this beautiful choreographed song where we need every single note, we need them all, then we can see this, this beautiful symphony that is our life. So now it becomes a dance with a song and we've got all this emotions and everything comes together and we see, yes, it is this perfectly choreographed dance with this perfectly orchestrated musical melody that is my life. And I appreciate everything along the way. Does anyone know what the name for that is? There's like a, like an actual like term. Anyone wanna like throw out a guess in like the therapy world? Um, if you can think of the term that is associated to this. I would say gratitude. Gratitude, you're on a really, really, really close. Close to friends of Bill also. Appreciate it. Ex expect nothing and appreciate everything is very much the Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, yeah. Friends of Bill, domestic violence survivors, trauma survivors. I'm not sure what book it came from, but I know that it correlates with all of those. So I'm just eating it up. Thank you for such a wonderful, wonderful oh, meal. So welcome. Yeah. And we're just getting started, Jules. I'm yeah. so glad Thank to meet you. We're going we're gonna to have a good time. I can tell. Anyone else want to take one more guess? You guys are on really, really good tracks. So we've got gratitude. We've got kind of this releasing of expectations, right? Appreciating everything. And there's an actual term that is, I'm going to give you the, the letters, PTG. I'm going to say it and you, all of your faces are going to be like, oh, maybe, I don't know. Post-traumatic growth, PTG, post-traumatic traumatic growth. It is literally from our traumas, through our challenges, through the resistance, where all growth is made, okay? So if we can really get to that as like the goal, that is like the end all be all, that is like you've reached the Emerald City, it is post-traumatic growth, that in your life, everything you learn to grow from. And we can do this by changing really, really simple things to redirect our focus to how we are growing, how it is serving us, what it is offering us and everything in between. Does not mean we have to like it, right? Don't forget those low notes. 
does not mean that we do not have to like it. It does not mean that there's not gonna be some resistance. Again, that's where the growth comes in. So if there's no resistance, there is no growth. Think of resistance training, where all my, my disability icons, I got Brianna, I got Jackie World, I got Bean uh, logging in right now, got my icons. So they know that the only way to grow a muscle is by the resistance. We literally traumatize the muscle in order to make it grow. How fascinating is that? We add trauma to our muscles. We tear the muscle fibers in order for them to repair themselves and to grow. So we can think of that in our lives, that everything that is happening to us is actually happening for us. It is allowing us to grow and it's allowing, it's really serving our growth and our ultimate um, growth. And I used to have a really hard time with this. Um, I was thinking about kind of the law of cause and effect. And I remember reaching out to this woman, she's very wise, and I said, what do you feel about like cause and effect? Like, like, did I cause, you know, did I do something to cause this effect of having a disability? Like, I, I really wasn't having, a, I wasn't able to wrap my head around it. And she says, you're looking at disability as a bad thing. I was like, oh, touche, right? She says, what if this actually meant that you were like super able and I said, yeah, I think you're right. I think that everyone that has gone through a disability, through illness, injury, birth, whatever, has a disability in their life, all their other abilities seem to be heightened, right? You've got someone that has lost their, their eyesight. Everything else is heightened, right? Their, their sense of touch, their sense of hearing, all of that seems to be heightened when something else is, um, is disabled in some way. So. Again, it's all about reframing this focus, right? So if we can give a new meaning to everything, then it somehow empowers us instead of disempowers us. It doesn't disable us, it enables us. So um, we're gonna go through some exercises. Again, go game on today, like get your paper and pen, like total student of your life. I want this to be about you. Good job, Brie You really, really figuring out some really cool things about yourself. So I first want to start with something really, really fun. And I want you to pretend like it's Christmas Eve. Who loves Christmas Eve? Oh, oh, me, I love Christmas Eve. I love Christmas. I love holidays. I love the just everything about them, hanging the lights, the ornaments. But of course, we love the presents, right? So I want you to pretend like it's Christmas Eve and you've you have already written your list to Santa Claus. You've been a very good girl or boy this year. And you know that in the morning, because you have a good, you are a good girl. And by good, I mean, we are all good, right? We are all good people. We all deserve everything we want. It is not about being good or bad. That's why just side note on parenting, don't tell your kids to be a good boy or be a good, be a good girl. They are good. We're all good by nature. That's a part of being human. So Side note, I digress. So because of that, you are getting everything that your heart's desire. It's Christmas Eve, you've already written your list and everything is gonna be under that tree in the morning. Everything that you put on that list. So these packages are gonna open up and it is your dream life. Ultimate dream life. I mean like big, okay? Like really big. Like sky is the freaking limit. What did you put on that list? What are you opening in the morning? If it is your ultimate, 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 ultimate dream life. And I mean, do not hold back like for a freaking second. I'm gonna turn on some music and I want you to write your list to Santa Claus. Have fun with it. Literally, Unleash your heart. My God, be in the jacket. The jacket. Oh. So cute. So whatever is on your heart's desire. The small things that like you just crave. The big things that are like, they kind of scare you a little bit and everything in between.
What are your relationships like? What is your professional life like? What are the things that you're doing? What are the things that you have? Big, small, everything. Like, let your heart really, really flow with this. Do not hold back for a second. Another like 30 seconds. All right, another couple seconds. Let this last thing you write be like, whoo, that scared me a little bit. Okay, like that big. Let it scare you. Yeah, Jules, I can tell. Whatever she wrote, woo! She's excited. Good, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to scare you a little bit. Because our dreams should scare us a little bit. Going back to that resistance, right? If they don't, they're not challenging us enough, right? Typically, we're gonna go for what we can know we can do perfectly. That's why I call like the ultimate villain perfectionism. Whose villain of perfectionism stops them in their tracks daily from moving forward? Daily, like minute to minute right here. And here's something that is, I think, going to blow your mind. There's one word that many great minds have attributed to happiness. That when we are having, when we have this thing, when this thing is in action, we feel joy. Even if things in our life aren't going super to plan, but when we have this one thing, they attribute that to true happiness. Can anyone guess what that word is? You want to put it in the chat, if you want to shout it out, whatever. Jules? Contentment. Contentment? No, but close. Good, good guess. Can any of the icons guess this one? When you are, when this happens, there is like celebration. Doesn't matter if it's big or small. Okay, then I'm going to do it. What I did 25 years ago. When I walked in to the Olympics and said, y'all are not going to believe it, but the United States Army Golden Knights are going to be the opening act of the opening ceremony of the U Paralympics of the Centennial Olympic Games in Atlanta, Georgia. And it was a double leg amputee U.S. Army Golden Knight reunite, reunited with his teammates who showed that we could triumph over any tragedy or trauma or circumstances with the right resources. And that resource is always hopefulness and faith in the future. Hope and make it happen. Visualize, realize. And it may not be like you're saying, I love your good parenting. Don't tell your child they're bad. We are all divine. We are all so divine. You, you are like right there. there. There's a word that literally sums up the hopefulness with the uh, with like the mat, the making it happen, right? It's progress. Oh, it is progress. Uh, Jules, you were so much fun to watch. 
So when we have any ounce of progress, when we see the measurable progress happening, we feel elated. We're like, yeah, like I may not have reached my goal, but I'm getting there. And then what happens when we reach our goal? There's a little bit of like a, oh, now what? Right? Because we kind of feel like stopped of that progress. Then we got to reach for the next goal because it's not so much about the goal. It's the getting there that is really, truly making us who we are, right? It's who we become in the process of reaching those goals. It's the progress in action that truly, truly equates to that happiness. And what did I say is the ultimate villain? Perfection. And what does perfectionism stop in its tracks? Progress. Progress. Does that like blow anyone's mind? Blows your freaking mind, right? So our goal is to completely smash the villain of perfectionism and really embrace that progress. And so often I, I did this poll on my, my Instagram. I said, is anyone else just like craving that yellow brick road to like show us that we're on the right track, right? So many people are like, well, just tell me what to do so I can do it perfectly. That's our goal is to just get it done perfectly. It's that freaking perfectionism. And we can't ever do anything perfect. That's, a, that's like a hoax. So we want that progress. It's not so much the perfection. I want you to really swap that for, if I'm making progress, that is the goal. Does not matter how big or small, but every time I am stuck on that perfectionism, switch gears, move my body, get, get things moving again so that I can actually get back to what's actually giving me happiness, which is progress. So cool watching the girls in the disability icon program because they make this progress. It builds the trust in themselves, AKA confidence. And then they're like, what else can I do? What else can I tackle? Cause I did that. I didn't think I'd get here, which means I don't think I can get there, but now I actually can because I didn't think I could get here. Right? That's such a beautiful moment where you're like, now what else can I do? So things such as fitness, so often we think of like fitness as the goal, but no, fitness is what we do and exercise and working out is what we do so that we have the energy, the confidence, the momentum, the progress towards these bigger and bigger goals. Unless your goal is to get to the Olympics and then actually fitness really is kind of the, the, the means there, right? So, so it kind of depends on the goal, but so often that's what happens is it builds our confidence and then the progress takes over and then it's just like this ripple and domino effect. All right, so we've got that kind of dialed in, right? So now you're like, okay, if we know that we got to get rid of perfectionism, we got to get the progress. I got to get this bird's eye view. Now we got a lot of things to do. How the heck do you do it? Well, I want to ask yourself two questions. Am I the kind of person? And I want you to write down your instinctual answer. Don't think about it. Get out of your head, into your heart, play from your body, instinctual answer. Am I the kind of person that focus on focuses on what's going right or what's going wrong? First answer, you're thinking it this long, you're done. First answer. Now I want honest hand raises, okay? Who thinks about what's going wrong? Okay, we got about half. Who thinks about what's going right? Fewer than the wrongs. And, and there's a couple of people I can't see the faces because their screens are, turn your screens on. Come on, we got Chelsea, Catherine, Nicole. Come on, girls, come on, girl. I gotta see your beautiful faces. I don't know who I'm talking to here. Okay, so clearly that's going to dictate some direction. Now, second answer, do I focus on what is in my control or out of my control? In my control, out of my control. Instinctual answer, ready? Who focuses on what is out of my control? So this is like weather. This is like, you know, your body having a UTI, whatever. Who focuses on what you can control? How you show up, how you're viewing a situation, the things you're asking yourself, right? I love Jessie when she gets really pumped about an answer or a topic. She starts jumping out of her chair. 
Okay, so those two things are literally going to dictate, dictate if you're on the road to progress, if you're on the road to perfectionism, or if you're stuck right in the middle. Because if you are focusing on what's going right, yet you're also focusing on, on what you can't control, you're a little stuck because those really do kind of contradict each other, right? So, ah, oh, there we go, Chelsea. Hello. <laughs> um, so, and Nicole, thank you so much. So that is going to clearly dictate your direction, your focus. So the next time you feel stuck, you're not going anywhere, right? Like you, you can't get out of your head. First of all, I want you to get out of your head. I want you to get, start moving from your body, changing your physical state, literally turning on any song, getting your body moving. That is immediately going to change your, your frame of mind. Immediately. Like I'm talking immediately. How quickly? Um, immediately. Let's do it real quick. So we're getting a little sleepy. So let's dance it off. Oh, this song's about to end. So that doesn't help. Let's rewind that. So move your body. Literally change your changes your state okay i love it so immediately turn on the music can't get out of your head turn the music get out of your body get into your heart okay that's number one the other one is ask yourself right now am i focusing on what i can control what i can't am i focusing on what is going right or what is going wrong if you simply shift what is going right and what is in my control you will immediately make progress if you learn nothing more from today, then literally those three things, change your state, change what's going wrong, or excuse me, to what's going right, and change what's in your control, you're done, okay? Like you are clearly on the path to that vertical view because now you've got the bird's eye view, you're seeing it's a beautifully choreographed dance, you're appreciating, it, appreciating every single note, and you're realizing, oh, I can dictate more of this dance than I realized. Okay, this is my dance, this is my life. But when I start thinking about what I can't control, which are the limiting beliefs, the things maybe my mom's told me when I was little, the things you pick up along the way, all these limiting beliefs that just start to like, I call them the flying monkeys going on in my head and just like, oh my God, they're crazy. And what are they doing? They're trying to keep me from using my full potential which is getting everything under that Christmas tree. Okay, so I wanna do another thing that's gonna get us towards the, all those presents under the Christmas tree. So something that has 1000% been crucial in my ability to move forward and have that progress is the creation of Vertical Blonde. Vertical Blonde is me. Right? That's what I named my, my website. That's what I named my Instagram. That is me in my like most highest potential form. Vertical Blonde is me. Vertical Blonde I came up with in sort of like, a, I wanted to find a cute name to call my blog. I'd moved to Hawaii from Utah, Utah and I was trying to keep all my friends and family like abreast of what I was doing in Maui, wanted to create a blog. And I wanted to come up with something really cutesy and catchy to name it. And at this point, it was about five years ago. So this was really early in my personal development journey. But I had grasped one single like nugget, which was that our words have power. Our words have so much power. Things we say to ourselves have so much power. The things we say to other people have so much power. Talk about limiting beliefs, right? We're instilling that into our friends, into our family, into our kids, into our parents. Things that we think are our limits, we then put on other people and onto ourselves. So I knew that our words have power. And at this point, I was like completely 
in like magical mode of like the energy of the island, which they call the mana. And I was like, the mana is going to heal my legs and I'm going to be vertical and I'm going to be walking and I don't have to do any work and it's just going to happen, right? If I, my words have power. So I was a little bit in la la land at that point, but our words really do have power. And so I came up with this name, Vertical Blonde. Like if I want to be vertical, I better start calling myself vertical. And the blonde was obvious. So I started calling myself vertical blonde and something happened. This vertical mindset started taking over. And I thought, if everything is taking me vertically, everything that happens to me is elevating me. It's elevating my growth. It's elevating my mindset. It's elevating my skills, my experiences, all of this. And everything started to take me vertically. And then I started to develop kind of this vertical method of looking through life and this vertical mindset. And I started showing up as vertical blonde. Vertical blonde is extremely optimistic, yet she's not in la la land. She knows that her optimism is completely directed by her actions. So she knows that if she wants something to happen, yes, she has to speak it and, and say it and try and manifest it, but she's got to meet that with action. She's got to have her progress. She's got to focus on what she can control, not what she can't. She's got to focus on what's going right, not what's going wrong. She's extremely assertive. She asks for what she wants and she completely shows up and like is a badass when she presents. She is who you are looking at right now. Sarah is the one with the messy desk that's behind the scenes. Sarah is the one that had put 6 p.m. in her phone because it was 6 p.m. Eastern and not 4 p.m. for her time zone. So I was in the gym working out and I'm like, oh, maybe I should go get ready for my, my presentation. Yeah, that's Sarah. Sarah's a little chaotic. She's a little unorganized and she is completely stopped by her perfectionism on the regular. Vertical Blonde is not. Do you want to know what I need when I do when I when I call in vertical blonde? When I need her and I'm like, vertical blonde, like I need you right now. Like I'm kind of freaking out. It's like go time. And I, I gotta like present. I gotta make something happen. This is literally what happens. She's got her own theme song. And I turn this on. Is that like blasting your speakers on that end? Can you hear it now? And I flick my hair back. And it is go time. It is go time. And I lift the team spirit and I rock out and I get a service. I like it is freaking go time. Okay? This is what happens when Vertical Blonde takes over. I, I literally kid you not, I will go into the mirror, I will slick my hair back, and I will say it is go time. I will call her in and be like, Vertical Blonde, let's go. I need you. So today we're going to come up with your version of Vertical Blonde. We're going to come up with your, I, I don't like the term alter ego because it is, it is very much you. Okay. It is very much you, but it is like, it is you minus every limiting belief. It is you minus every time you looked at life through a victim uh, lens. Okay, it is you every time you feel like you failed and didn't get back up. It is the you minus all of that, okay? Minus the times you gave up, minus the times you didn't get back up, minus the times that you were like, why me? All that stuff. So I first want you to give some attributes of who is the kind of person that you have to become in order to be your own Santa Claus. If like, we didn't have to rely on some man with a beard and a big old belly to come down and bring us our presence. We went out there and we created our own dream life. Who is the kind of person that you have to become? Who is, who is she or he? They, whatever pronoun you're using, okay? Who are they? Who do you have to become? So I want you to go through and I want you to list some attributes. Go back to your first page and go to that Christmas list first and think, who is the kind of person that makes all of that happen? That doesn't sit around and wait for it to happen. They make it happen. Are they 
grateful, peaceful, calm? Are they assertive, freaking badass? Like what kind of attributes do they have that you will need to completely step into and embrace in order to make it happen? So that Christmas comes early, right? We don't have to wait for Christmas. We don't have to wait for anyone to make it happen for us. We literally go out, we get resourceful, we find opportunities and we're like, there's my, there's my in. And we make them happen. So what are some of these attributes? If you wanna put them in the chat, if you wanna say them out loud, I'd love to just hear some of the attributes, maybe one or two from your list that are like top of the list. Consistent and persistent. Consistent and persistent. Hell yeah. Love those. Thank you, Jesse. Who else? If you want to put it in the chat, we've got creative and humble. So funny you put humble to, on that beam because I just had a whole conversation with, um, uh, with my business coach consultant about that. Um, I'll come back to that one. So that's a really interesting one that comes up a lot. Balanced, organized, and driven. Love these. Love these. Keep them coming. Anyone else? You can shout it. You can type it. I do love that vertical blonde is your like badass and then Sarah, Sarah, because that's how I feel about Jesse Strawham and Jesse. Like Jesse Strawham is this badass, like I accomplished shit. I'm getting shit done. Like come at me, bro. And most of the time I'm her, but then there's sometimes when I'm, I'm just Jesse. Yes. Served, quiet, timid and unorganized. And like all, all of those old anti-perfectionist type mindset things. Do you are, do, have you been able to kind of dial in what the differentiator is? what causes you to go back to just Jesse? And there's nothing wrong with Jesse. I want to reiterate, it's not good, bad, you know, anything like that. It is real or like right and wrong. It is that there's two different parts of us, right? And they're both very, very valuable in different things. But have you been able to differentiate what makes you go from one to the other? Whenever I let judgment, others judgment of me, start to control my perception of me when I let those negative comments really control who I am. And Jackie knows, cause that's my person that I lean on. I'm like, am I wrong? Am I doing that's Like she, she gets to see Jesse often because it's like, when I do come out, I'm like, Jackie, can you, can you be my soundboard right now? Like when you question everything you already know. That is amazing that you've got Jackie. I also want to pinpoint there's a really good book that anyone that is in any kind of business should absolutely read, like Start It Tonight. It's called Start With Why. And he talks about how every why person, Jesse, you're very much a why person, needs a what and a how person, what, how, kind of what slash how. And Jackie's very much a what slash how person, right? So it's usually very um, um, more of an analytical behind the scenes and then visionary out there, right? So you're very much a why person and a lot of us why people, we really lean on those how and what people who are who have a little bit more of that like solidarity and like they can see things a little bit more analytical where we get very emotional. So it's really cool that you guys have each other. I want to just point that out because it's rare that you that a what and a how has a why and vice versa. So it's really, really cool. Really cool. Um, so let's go back to our list. We've got more coming in. Assertive, optimist, go-getter, consistent. That's coming up a lot. I love it. Um, and we've got heal when hurt happens rather than letting it stew. Oh, love that. Um, absolutely beautiful. I've loved these. And I want to come back to the humble because I think that's a really, I love that it came that you did that bean because that that is a beautiful attribute, right? Where we can stay humble in our progress. Um, and a lot of times we will get people using it against us. Have you ever experienced that where people will be like, stay humble, know your place, right? So for me, I got that a lot from my mother who was always like, stay humble. Don't you think that you're better than anybody else? 
And it would keep me playing small. Not that when I played big, I even thought I was bigger than anybody else. There was a lot of insecurity when you play big. I'm like, oh my God, am I going too much? But it can often be used against us because they're scared, right? Because the, the bigness sometimes scares people. So we can't get a lot of that judgment, going back to Jesse, because the bigness can scare people. And that us scaring people and not looking like we're humble will keep us kind of in our place, right? And keep us from like even creating those presents or even opening those presents if they're given to us. So I wanna bring that up because it, it was really poignant today in my session. And I hope that that offered something to you guys as well. Anyone that has had that used against them to stay humble in a, like in a negative way. Does that make sense? But like humbleness and like humility, that's a beautiful attribute. When you have humility in the presence of like greatness and bigness, that is huge. But don't ever let anyone use it to put you in your place, so to speak. Cool? Because we are playing very big. This is a group of people that wants to create very big presence, a very big life. We don't want to wait for anyone else to give them to us, although sometimes that might be given. But we don't want to be too scared to even open the, open the presents on Christmas morning. That makes sense? Everyone following my like very long analogy of Christmas Eve. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So, um, so we've got all these attributes. Love everything we've got going on our list. Now let's come up with a name. Jesse's got Jesse Strawham, right? Like she like she can call her in. And it's natural too. It's gonna roll off her tongue. Don't make it so like out there where you're like, bop, 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 right? And one girl do it. Uh, she came up with one that was in another language and then she always forgot the actual word. So then there was like this, I feel like I'm failing while I'm trying to succeed moment happening. So make sure that it's something that you can really call on. Oh, love you Bean, glad you popped in. Um, Make sure that it's something that you can call on really easily. It's going to roll off your tongue. It's going to be something that serves you. And when you hear it, you're like, oh. right? Like if just a straw ham, a vertical blonde, like get your ass in gear, let's go, right? So does anyone have a name that they want to share? This can always be a little intimidating. The one that I made, I think we did this a few months ago for one of our I think vertical core week maybe uh-huh I created back then that I still kind of lean on is my Brie babe that's just something that I've kind of always picked on that's what I always come back to is just Brie babe very simple bubbly happy positive that's mine right there I love it and how is she going to serve you Brie babe what how are we going to use her we are going to use her to keep me grounded and to make sure I continue to like, see kind of like how Jesse was saying, how like other people's comments kind of trip her up. Mine's myself. I continuously mm. let myself be my own, um, my own villain. I don't ever think I'm good enough. I don't ever think I'm going to achieve enough. And so what she, what Brie Babe does is say, yes, you freaking can. You can do it everyone knows you can do it now you need to believe that you can do it because for 10 years my friends are telling me that I could do it and it wasn't until these weeks and joining your group that I was like oh wait they were right the whole time they're right <laughs> so yeah believing in myself more more empowerment that's that's what she does she's like your pep rally in a bottle right like she is like what you call on when you're like I can't do this she's like the hell you can't let's go right she's got the pom-pom she's bubbly she's excited she's like ready to like cheer you on and i love that so much and i would go as far as saying that like grounded might not even be the right word for her because she's lifting you up right like your limiting beliefs sort of like they're putting you back in your place right and i say that lightly i hope you know what i mean by like putting you in your place like we're often told to like know your know what your worth is know your place no yeah when i said the term grounded i guess that means like 
my insecurities and my anxiety, like ground that stuff, Ooh. take that shit back down. Like, don't let it like get, cause I am just like the, you two ladies. I'm a very emotionally driven person. It takes me half a second to be like emotionally upset and that mm. can take my whole day away. So ground those emotions. And like you said, like, what am I in control of? That's what, that's what Free Babe will continuously remind me is focus on what's in control. Ah, freaking love it. Literally like that encapsulated everything that I want you to get from this session right? Like you, you named her, you know exactly what her purpose is, you know, when you're going to need her, when you're going to call her in and what she's going to do is she's going to completely redirect your focus. That's what, that's what this is for. And to remind you guys that like, this isn't outside of yourself. This isn't someone else. This is a part of who you are. Okay. Back to that amazing therapist that I talked about earlier. Her name's Kathy. And she does um, a type of therapy called IFS, it's internal family system, it's parts work. So we're learning the different parts of ourselves and they all serve a purpose and they've all been created more so out of survival than anything else to survive hard moments, things like that. And then we create beliefs around those moments and so forth. So it's a big trickling effect, but this just becomes another part of us and it can calm the parts that are not serving us in that moment. Right? Nothing's good, nothing's bad, nothing's right, nothing's wrong. It is what it is and it is who you are. But now we're taking it a next step further. It's who you are becoming in the pursuit of opening up these beautiful presents and giving them to yourself. You're not waiting for life to throw you something different than it has. You're not waiting for life to go another way you're saying, I'm taking everything I've got and I'm creating the life that I want. I'm taking my super abilities that I've gained along the way. I'm taking my growth I've gained along the way. I'm taking my perspective I've gained along the way. I'm taking all this resistance training, all this, all this like grit that I've gotten along the way, this way to adapt, this way to overcome, this way to see things differently, this way to have a new compassion. I'm taking all of that and now I'm letting another part of me take the lead. And it is the Brie Babe. It is the dressy straw ham. It is the vertical blonde. So before I, we get off this call, I would love to hear everyone's name if you're okay with that. And after this call, now that you've gained some friendships within this group, anyone that you feel like you've gained um, that, that trust with, exchange names and start to call each other that. Like Jackie, call Jesse, Jesse Strawham, right? Be like, Jesse Strawham, shut up, let's go. Jesse, shut up. Jesse Strawham, grab my hand, let's go, right? Brie babe, let's go. I love that. You guys have a really cool, really cool dynamic. I'm still looking for my what, how person, right? I have to be that for myself until, until I find them. What else, who else we got? Who else wants to name themselves before we get off this call? Hey, Sarah, great job. Uh, Ryan Flipson from San Antonio. My, uh, mine's been uh, Rhino for about 22, 23 years now. Rhino, I wanna hear the, the attributes for Rhino. But how do you use them? Ambitious, you know, perservant, go, go getter. He charges through. Stuff. Look, you even got exactly. the rhino den. Yes, Dude. I do. Neighbor Dude. did that for me just recently. You could freaking teach this class. <laughs> I love it. And love do you what you do. Share, do you want to share any of the uh, the presents that are waiting under the tree that you that Rhino is helping to create? The big, you know, the big one that's scary probably uh, would be having a retreat center and uh, working with kids uh, with and without disabilities, helping them develop uh, good values and virtues and leadership qualities and a lot of this that we're talking about today, good mental health. Amazing. What is the to... first step that you can take right now after this call to get you closer to that? Oh, good question. A uh, good next first step is putting it on paper and, and not worrying about 
a physical camp rhino if jesse were somebody i think was going to ask that or rhino retreat but uh making it a program and just like um uh outlining a book outlining a program whether it's a uh, week long or, or or a weekend long i love and i've that. started to do that will you send me your outline when it's done i can do that yes. how long do you need to write your outline <laughs> uh give me give me a week to do a rough draft one week i'm gonna have rhino's rough draft of his outline for his retreat program Okay, this is what it looks like when you have someone that holds accountability and tells you the boxes so that you know what to check right so often we get stuck and we like I want this big retreat center right this feels really overwhelming and really fucking beautiful, by the way, I can't wait for my son to attend right that's amazing so needed so gorgeous, especially in where we are right now. The kids need it. Kids are hurting. Yep. Yep. Okay. So Rhino offering it in program form allows him to develop a following, allows him to get it bigger, allows him to, to create a movement behind it for the day when his Rhino, what are we calling him in there? The mini Rhinos, the, we've, have we figured sure. that out yet? A, a group of Rhinos is called a crash, but I think that's more for my public speaking, uh, motivational stuff, but. Hey, we can call them little, little rhino crash. I love it. Sure. I love it. So <laughs> until the day that his little rhinos are like, will you please open a retreat center so that we know where we're going? Right? That's how you get there. We break it down backwards. And the first thing he needs to do is set up that outline and he needs someone to hold him accountable. So you better believe that in my phone right now in my, in my calendar, in one week, I'll be sending him a message if I haven't heard from him saying, where the hell's your outline? Where is it? Okay. Rhino's outline. So I'm giving him one week. Now he's got a box to check off. And it's so funny because in the disability icon program, there's a few girls that have been in, in it for a while. And they're like, we know what to do. We don't really need to check off our boxes anymore. Right. Cause they log in and it shows the workouts and I don't need to check out the boxes. I'm good. And a few weeks go by and the girls are like, so my pair of bellies back and I'm totally off course. I'm like, I've hit a plateau. And, and I even wrote it on my board and said, if we don't check the boxes, it doesn't freaking happen. Right? We have to know what boxes that we're checking in order for it to happen. So I'm super pumped. This is beautiful here. I'm so stoked right now. All right. We're coming up on time. I want to hear more names. Jackie, I got to hear your name. Oh God, she's like, why did you call on me? Why did you, I'm the behind the scenes girl. Why'd you call on me? That's, that's Jacqueline Morales, here to serve it up. Jacqueline Morales. <laughs> do you have, do you have a working name so far? Or at least some attributes that you can share? No, ma'am, come on. Did you do No, ma'am. Did you write it down? You've got about 30 seconds while I call on the rest of the group because you know I'm not turning it off until I get from the icons, especially. All right, Jody, you're up. Oh, the twins are like, why is she calling on us? See, when we're left to ourselves and no one is holding us accountable, no one's checking on us, we don't do the work. Like, I'm not even like pointing you guys out because I'm the exact same way. If I'm not answering to somebody else, if I have to answer to myself, it doesn't freaking happen. It can, I'm not saying never, but it's kind of rare. Like we can give ourselves an excuse for sure. We can justify anything to ourselves, anything. All right, who else am I hearing from? Dalkin, what's your name? Uh, let's see here. He's at a wrestling match. It's Buff like Dalkin. Oh, Buff like Dalkin. Yeah. I don't have to guess what attributes he's got. Hell yeah. I love it. Congrats. Can't wait to hear how it goes. Who else we got to hear from? Jules, you've been so beautiful to watch. What is yours? Well, 
I'm not. Both like Dalkin. Both like Dalkin. It's mine. Dalkin, can I copy yours and get buff like Dalkin? Can Jules become buff like Dalkin even at this age? Yes, yes I, yeah. I have a program especially for you, Jules. It's called that's, Disability that's, Icon that's, Fitness. That's thank actually you, Dino. the purpose. Thank you, Dalkin. Thank you, Vertical One. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> thank you, John. That's, a, <laughs> that's actually the idea, you know, for everybody to be buff like Dalkin. Yeah, go for it. All right, that's my new name, Beth Light Belkin. I'll be checking in with you, Belkin. Anybody else want to share? Belkin. Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Uh -huh. Nicole, let's hear from your beautiful self. What name or at least an attribute did you come up with? Am I getting blank stares? You guys did not know you were going to be called on. You'd be like, if I don't raise my hand, she won't even look at me. Jackie and Jody, I'm coming back for you. You better believe it. You better have something written down like stacked. Can you get Tyler too? Can you please call on Tyler? Tyler, what's up? What's up? What's that name? Come on. Go get her. I love that. It's quick. It's to the point. I'd love to hear what theme song your go-getter has. Is there a theme song that comes to mind? Maybe, maybe not. I'm telling you guys, if you need to steal mine, something happens to your body when you hear smells like teen spirit, no doubt it goes crazy. All right, we gotta, we gotta clean this up. We gotta nip this up. We're already in an hour. Jackie, Jody, who's going first? You guys are so mad at me. <laughs> the final countdown. Da -da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. All right, we're going to go out with that one. Jackie and Jody, who's going first? At least give me an attribute. Come on, girls. Jody, WWGS. <laughs> Come on. Can't find final countdown in here. They're talking to yeah. each other about their attributes right now. You guys are so <laughs> naughty. I, I, you guys are in so much trouble. Come on. Cause it's the final. I, I don't know my name yet. Okay, um, give me your attribute. Um, like uh, confident. Yes. Um, powerful. Um, and uh, like 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 strong, but like yeah. Okay, I love them. Now I want you to sit up in your chair. Everyone do this with me. Literally, you, the testosterone in your body, no, it's not gonna make you masculine if you're a girl, will improve when you go into power pose. Hands on the hips or up. I want you to bring it tall and I want you to say powerful and confident. I am powerful and I am confident. Shoulders back, Jody. Shoulders, there you go. Confident and powerful. I love it. Or Jackie. All right, Jody, you're next. Do your names or attributes. Come oh, on, girl. There we go. Hello. Yep, I got you. Okay. Um, I would say. Um, First ones that Conf come to mind. Confidence. Um, being the true me, not letting like people say things about me and me believing them. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
hundred freaking percent. We all felt that, right? We all freaking felt that. You got it, girl. You got it. You all have it. Chelsea, did you want to add as well? Your last one. Give me an attribute or a name. So freaking proud of you, Jackie and Jody, by the way. Came in with a punch. I put like um, to be consistent with myself, like to hold myself accountable, um, you know, instead of like, oh, like thinking of, you know, I want to do that or I want this to happen instead of saying it like that to like make small goals and hold myself accountable or maybe actually get somebody else to, you know, help me stay accountable. Cause like you were saying, it's like, we can make up any excuse in the book and be like, oh, okay, well, yeah, I don't want to do that. You know? So maybe finding totally. that one person that can um, help me um, stay on top of everything. So hundred yeah. percent girl, you got this. I'm so proud of all of you today. So, so, so freaking proud of you. If any of you guys do really want to have, especially females, I'm sorry guys, I'm still not working with you yet. But any of the girls here today want to join the Disability Icon Fitness Program, it is also soon going to be having an additional level. And that is the professional, it is the vertical business. Okay, and that is holding you accountable. There's branding, marketing, all kinds of beautiful things that are going to be coming down the pipe. And the icons, if you're in the program, will get first dibs and first like punch at it. So if you guys want to join, you get your first month free. Just use the code Will with me. Okay. Um, send out an email after this with the link, or you can go over to verticalblonde.com. You just go to VV Fitness. You'll see. Get the free. Um, get your free first month. Come join. There is the accountability for your fitness, and we get into fitness so that we can pursue our bigger goals. The last thing I want you to do as you come out of this and right after you hit end on this call is I want you to go back to that first page of everything that you saw underneath that Christmas tree. Everything that you want in your life, big audacious goals, little goals, little celebrations and everything in between. And I want you to ask yourself, who do I need to continue to become? Because you doing this today is you taking that first step, right? Then what is your next step after this? Rhino knows what his next step is. He's gonna be working on that outline. So what is the next step that you have to take after today so that you are on your way to that next level version of yourself and having a vertical view of your own life? Let's dance our way out of here. Who had fun today? What a good time. I didn't make you cry. <laughs> judgment cloud that dance your way out of here i love this song all right jesse i'll let you take it from here thank you guys so much it's an honor will with me i freaking honor this i do not take it lightly that i've been on every week that you've done this not for a second Please continue to hold my Tuesdays because I'm here for good. <laughs> Tuesday is your day, Sarah. Thank you so much for providing your time, your expertise, just every single time. I literally have chills after every event. And you know, you think that you level up a certain point and it's like, ooh, Sarah comes and just hits you with some perspective every single time. It's like wham, bam, perspective to your face. And it's always a great event. You're going to look for us again in November. Sarah will always have her Tuesday slot. And it is it is yours for the taking, always and forever. We appreciate you here at Wheel With Me. You know that. We love you so much. Um, always bringing the energy. I hope you guys gain value from this course. You will get a recording of it in your email along with the links to Sarah's vertical program. I recommend joining. Jackie's in it. Jackie raves about it all the time. You know, it's been on my list. I'm going to probably join here soon. And I just recommend doing it. You know, uh, I do want to say congratulations, Tyler. You won the Kenda Tires today. Um, we still have three days of this empowerment week left tomorrow. Join me as I talk about taking control over what we have control over in our life, specifically 
our nutrition, our mindset, and our fitness. Um, those are the three things we'll be touching on tomorrow. So bring a pen and paper, bring your, your open mind, and let's do it to it. Uh, Thursday, we have uh, sex and disability with Dr. Tepper. Dr. Tepper has a spinal cord injury himself. He's been studying this since 1992. So he has a lot of time in studying sex and disability. 10 out of 10, recommend joining his course. And then Friday, we're joined with Bean for her neuro recovery course. And we are super stoked on that as well. We look forward to having you guys. Uh, and thank you for taking an hour out of your evening every day this week to join us. We really appreciate you. And we will catch you back here tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern. See you then. Thank you, guys.